Hey friends, Jessica here from Creators Couture. So in this quick tutorial, we're gonna do two different abstract fall backgrounds. And one of the cool things about both of these tutorials is that we are using a single color palette, but using different brushes. So by layering those brushes with the same color palette, first of all, you know that it's gonna go perfectly together, but the colors come out of the brushes in different ways so it can make really cool effects. And one of the really cool things about the both of the tutorials is that um, we're using just one color palette and it's this one for this demo is fall, but you could swap out for any color that you want, any color palette that you already have or create your own from a photo or image and it can be for any season. So you can use these um, tips for, you know, winter, spring, summer, what have you. So let's get started on the first one. Oh, and just so you know, the my members are gonna have access to the brushes and um, and they're already loaded with the colors, so it makes it a little bit more fun. And you're gonna have the source PSD files. So over here on the right is the, um, the background and it's a little crazy, just very like abstract and cool. And over here, if you look on the, um, bottom left you know you can see a little preview of the four different brushes that i used so i'm going to just peel back the layers here and let's see what we do here so first of all um, i start with this background here well first of all i had just you know i created a new layer and what i did was i grabbed artistic autumn brush number 23 i'll link that down below and this has got a color palette here from one of my um from actually the same collection so this is an autumnal color palette that i created from images actually and let me plug back in my tablet here let's get moving all right there we go so basically this is a really cool soft brush like this and what i did was just kind of like fill in this whole background now first of all i kind of just went like this to speed it up and then I went through and filled in the background and made these like little circles and I think it looks really cool. So here you can see an idea of like um, what I did here. So made these, you know, big kind of circular things and it didn't have to be perfect. So the next thing that I did, what did I do? Ah, yeah, so then I added this watercolor, um, no, it's the watercolor tie-dye brush. Um, as my next brush. So I'll make a new layer and there's like a little reference. So I grabbed my tie dye brush number eight and now I didn't change the color palette at all. And also I might have overlooked this but this uses my pattern stamp technique um, which I use in lots of tutorials. I'll have a link down below if you're not familiar with it. But you go over here, you grab the pattern stamp tool and then you choose the brush, choose Impressionist, and then pick a color palette. Um, and it's really easy, but that way you have the brush strokes in all these different colors. So I'm just gonna kind of do some brush strokes there. And as you can see, the color comes out in different ways. It's a totally different brush, but it goes together perfect. And then what did I do? Okay, so then I'm gonna make a new layer below that. And now this is a brush, uh, just a funky brush that I created. And um, sometimes you can make brushes that like, it's not, I don't know, it's not realistic, it's not whatever. And you might think, I don't really have a need for this brush, but you can make some cool things. So I just made like some dots and kind of staggered them out like this. And it creates this cool kind of like a Missoni sort of pattern. Um, it's really kind of fun. So it's just a crazy brush but like layering it on its own, it might be a little bit crazy, but layering it in this, um, you know, kind of digital background, it can make some really cool effects. So I like layer, you know, maybe do some brush strokes like this, kind of behind that. Although I actually, I think I'm gonna stay away from the, um, maybe stay away from the tie dye a little bit cause it might get like a little lost, so. You know, I just kind of played around with it and it just kind of turned out how it turned out. And then what did I do? Let's see here, I think, oh yeah, above this layer, I made a new layer and maybe I don't want so much of that crazy funky brush showing. 
So I might just like hide some of it behind some, some more, you know, these like round shapes. So I might just, you know, play around with it there and kind of, you know, just hide a little bit. I think that's kind of fun. That's looking good. So I'm happy with this. It's always different. And that's the cool thing is, you know, you can take this idea, you know, use your own color or play up the brushes a little bit, make it your own. And then you can, um, you know, do what you want with it. You can sell this online, make a digital background, create a template, create artwork. Um, and I have a lot of people who make stuff for sale and sometimes they're a little bit like shy to take something, you know, a tutorial directly and make something for sale. But as long as you did it yourself and made it your own, I want you to um, create things for sale, create uh, client work, whatever, you know, it's, uh, that's my job is to like give you ideas, you know, so um, take advantage of that. <laughs> and then I have the last brush where, you know, we're adding all these like kind of unlikely brushes together. So I'm taking a brush from my Galaxy collection. So totally different collection, but I like the way it looks splattery. And again, I'm not changing the color palette. So I'm just kind of flicking it throughout here and creating these cool sort of sprays on top. And there you have it. We have a funky, crazy abstract background and, and it's something totally unique. And then you can like use this for your templates, use this for your um, emails, whatever. But uh, that's, that's the first one. And then let's go into the second one here. We have got a little preview for you. So over here on the bottom left, you can see I used mainly four different brushes. So it can look really complicated, but it's actually just four brushes. So I'm gonna peel back. I started with a brown background and then I put these strokes on here like this. So this one, Again, we are using the pattern stamp color blending. So we get pattern stamp tool. We're gonna get artistic autumn brush number four. And I'm using a different color palette. And actually this color palette here, I sampled this pattern directly from an image of a pumpkin. So what I did, did I just draw? Anyway, so yeah, I just kind of, Let's see here. I just made a new layer and with like a light pressure, I kind of made some like little strokes like this. And I'm not gonna worry about it being perfect, but you know, you can just make it your own. In this brush, you know, if you push hard, you got like this, you push light, you got like this. So you've got a lot of different options. But I did something like that. Um, and then underneath it, I made a new layer and I, I'm not changing the um, the color palette again and I just grabbed one of my tie-dye brushes and this is brush number three so what I did was with a light pressure I kind of filled in the areas you know like this so this one is like maybe not as pretty as my other one so you know what I'm just gonna flip on but as you can see, you know, it creates those beautiful color blending strokes and the tie dyes are still so popular right now. So I'm gonna put on my original one because it looks a little prettier. So we've got those two strokes and we kind of fill most of it, but there's a little bit of negative space. And then what I did was I created a new layer. And now for this one, we're just gonna use a one color brush. And this is a, a silhouette brush from the same Artistic Autumn collection. And it's a silhouette of a leaf. So where did I put them? I put them kind of in the corner. So I kind of went like this and just, you know, put a few leaves and they always move around and twist and stuff. And then I took the opacity down to about like 84. So it's not, uh, all the way strong because I think it looks a little bit good and then what we are going to do is I'm going to what is it command no command and click on this layer icon here so that's going to select that um, that layer 
and it's going to select everything on the layer so I'm making a selection so command and then I think it's control on a PC and then click on that layer you click on that layer square there and that makes a selection on this case I don't think it's a big deal either way on this case I'm not using a clipping mask because I put my opacity down and I but I still want the tie-dye brush to be at full opacity but really it's probably not going to make that big of a difference so now I'm getting my tie-dye brush 17B, or you can grab another one, using the pattern stamp brush technique and using that same uh, image sampled from a pumpkin, I'm going to, on a new layer, paint inside those, um, inside that shape like that. And so now those, uh, I'm using like a light thing. Okay, so now it looks pretty good. So now we've got that leaf shape, but it's like um, a little bit more subtle, you know, and it's a little bit abstract. And even I could take this leaf like down a little bit, the opacity, because I think it looks a little bit brown. So, you know, it's just an, it's an abstract leaf background. It's kind of funky. It's kind of cool. Great for fall, but you can use the same principle with even like something wintry, you know? So, I mean, you know, you can do it like a lot of different things. But it's all about taking like one color palette and just layering a few brushes from different collections and seeing what you create and it's really fun and then on this one i just added a few different um using that same leaf silhouette brush what i did was i added one of my 24 karat gold layer styles to the layer and then i just went and stamped on just around some of the edges like some little gold silhouette leaves so you could do it, you know, glam like this. You know me, I always love a little bit of gold. Or here's without the gold. So those are just a couple quick tutorials, abstract backgrounds, and it looks like it could be really complicated, but we're letting the brushes do all the work and using a single color palette for both ones. So let me know if you have any comments or questions or comments down below and i'll have all of the tools and the source files available for my members as well and i'll have that link down below